Hello everyone, Sokka here, and welcome back to Dungeons & Dragons. Today we're looking into some Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount content, and when I saw that the Tortle was a playable race added by the Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount, I figured, let's build Orly, shall we? So if you want to know how to build a Tortle, and specifically a Tortle Bard, if you want to say, hey, I want to play as Orly, but I don't have... Uh, the books and the, the character sheets and the player's handbook, anything like that. By the time this video is over, we will have a complete character sheet for you to play as a Tortle Bard, much like Orly. Now, this will be a level 1 Tortle. You can use the player's handbook to adjust your levels accordingly, but first and foremost, let's take a look at the features that the Tortle gets. First of all, their bonuses. They get a plus 2 to their strength and a plus one to their wisdom. They live from 15 to 50 years old. That is adult for a turtle. They stand five to six feet tall and weigh 450 pounds. They are a medium sized creature with a 30 foot movement. They do have an unarmed strike with their claws, which is the 1d4 plus your strength modifier. They also have the ability to hold their breath underwater for one hour. Now, it says that they're not skilled swimmers. You don't get a boost to your movement speed in the water, but you don't have to worry about coming up for air. Their armor class is 17, and dexterity is not added into the, uh, the no armor addition. To armor class. You cannot use armor as a tortle. Their shell is their armor. However, you can use a shield. So if you wanted to do a sword and board tortle, a sortle, if you uh, are so inclined, you can add any shield to your armor class. Now, the one thing that the tortle has that can improve their chances of success is the shell protection or the shell hide. As an action, you can duck inside your shell, giving you a plus four to your AC, making your AC 21. That all sounds well and good. They can't hit me, you say. What are the trade-offs? Well, you do get advantages on strength and constitution saves uh, that you make. However, because you are immobile, essentially, you have disadvantage on all of your dexterity saves. You are essentially prone by the rules, which means all attacks on you do have advantage. So even though you are a beefy 21 AC, the enemy will have two D20s to try to break through that shell. You have zero speed and you cannot take any reactions. So if the enemy is hitting you and decides to move away, you cannot give an attack of opportunity. You have to stay within your shell. However, you can re-emerge as a bonus action at the start of your turn, therefore giving yourself the full movement and the attack action uh, after you emerge. You also are proficient in the survival skill, uh, which is part of the wisdom block here. And that makes sense because your wisdom is also a plus one to the turtle, a, a wise uh, creature indeed. And the two languages that you speak are common and aquan is the languages of the turtle. I also have the bard cards over here so that when we roll up our bard, we can assign uh, stats accordingly. So. I will go ahead and get started with the name, race, background, all the other stuff that would apply to Orly, as well as rolling these four D6s and taking the lower. That was garbage. It's a good thing that was a, uh, that was a demonstration roll. Uh, otherwise, that would be a five in one of our dump stats. So I will go ahead and get the base character sheet set up, as well as get our skills. Uh, rolled up and then add um, these proficiencies when we come back. So I will be right back. All right, I've rolled the four D6s six times, took the higher of the three, and we got two 13s, three 11s, and an eight. Now, as uh, per usual when creating the bard, uh, charisma and dexterity are going to be the way to go. So those will definitely be our two 13s. Then we have, let's go ahead and get rid of those 13s here. We have three 11s to dole out. Uh, because we have an unarmed strike and we may lose our, um, our weapon, let's go ahead and put one of the 11s into strength. Uh, we will put one of the 11s into uh, wisdom. Uh, let's put another 11 into constitution to help out our, um, our hit point situation. And then we'll just lower our intelligence down 
uh, to that eight and assign uh, modifiers. After, of course, we add the bonuses from the turtle, the strength of two and the wisdom of one, bringing our strength up to 13 and our wisdom up to 12. That's a good break point. Now that we have assigned our modifiers, the 13s and the 12 are a plus one. Our 11 is a plus zero and our eight is a minus one, affecting all of the skills to the side. One in our athletics and our strength saving throw, one in stealth, sleight of hand, acrobatics, and the deck saving throw. Nothing to add to our con. Minus one to intelligence saves, arcana, history, investigation, nature, and religion. Uh, one to our wisdom save, animal handling, insight, medicine, perception, and our turtle gives us our proficiency bonus uh, in the survival skill. So we went ahead and added our level one proficiency of two down here. So we actually have a plus three to survival checks and a one to our charisma save, deception, intimidation, performance, and persuasion. We also have one hit dice being a uh, level one. That hit dice will be one D8 for the bard. And at first level, you get your maximum hit dice to start. So we start with eight current hit points, and an initiative modifier of plus one from our decks. We have our languages down here in the bottom left of Common and Aquan, and we've copied and pasted on our features and traits our shell hide action, so uh, we will remember that we can boost up our armor class temporarily when we hide in our shell. Next up for our bard, we get the bard proficiencies. We have a light armor, which I put in notes that we cannot use. We know how to use simple weapons, the hand crossbow, a long sword, rapier, or short sword, and three instruments of our choice. We are also proficient in our dexterity and charisma saving throws, so we marked those and added our proficiency modifier of two to our saving throws in each, making the saves plus three for dex and charisma. Now for Orly's attacks and spell casting, uh, we've given him his claw, and I imagine he's proficient in using his claw, so we added the proficiency bonus for the attack, uh, the strength mod plus proficiency to give that a plus three for his 1d4 plus strength modifier damage, and then I figured he's more of a rapier type guy. I guarantee I'm gonna make, uh, make him pay with the rapier, and that is the, the three with the dex plus proficiency for a 1d8 plus dex. The bard can have the diplomatic pack or the entertainer's pack, and looking at both packs, I think the diplo fits Orly's character a little bit better. Comes with a chest, two cases for maps and scrolls, being the navigator makes sense. Fine clothes, that would be cool to see Orly in some, uh, some fine clothes. Comes with an ink and an ink pen, a lamp, two flasks of oil, five sheets of paper, perfume, some sealing wax, and some soap. He also can have a loot or any uh, other instrument, and he has his body bagpipes, just a little and uh, he makes music out of his shell, so that would be his uh, one instrument. He also comes equipped with leather armor, which he could probably sell, and a dagger. So we've gone ahead and added the dagger here, same attack bonus and same damage type as the claw, except the dagger has the benefit of being able to be thrown from a range of tw up to 20 for a, a good range, up to 60 for disadvantage, anything higher than 60, it cannot do it. Uh, so we have Orly's equipment set. As far as spells go, the bard can learn two cantrips and four total bard spells with two level one spell slots. So you're only going to be casting uh, two of these spells or one spell twice here. For Orly, I've chosen Vicious Mockery, Minor Illusion, Bane, Charm Person, Cure Wounds, and Thunder Wave. The spell save DC is going to be 11 for this particular Orly, 8 plus proficiency plus spell casting ability, which is charisma in this case, which comes up to 11. Spell attack bonus will be a plus 3 to your d20 roll. That is your proficiency plus your spell casting ability. All Orly, it might, uh, might help to put one point into that charisma to get that uh, up to a plus two to cast that. But I chose Vicious Mockery just for the simple fact that it would be hilarious to hear Orly say something like, Yo, mama's so fat. You know, she, you know, just sort of play into that Orly uh, speech pattern just a bit. 
But that is spell casting done. Uh, of course, they have ritual casting. If one of these was a ritual, then we wouldn't have to expend a spell slot to cast it. We'd just spend the 10 minutes. Uh, next up, we're going to uh, make sure we plug in the sailor background, and that's just going off of uh, conjecture. But I think Orly's background would be sailor, so let's see what the sailor entails. First of all, the sailor is proficient in athletics and perception bringing those up to a plus three as well. Of course, being in the navigator, the uh, the sailor is uh, proficient in navigation tools as well as the control of water vehicles. Also, the sailor comes with a 50 foot length of silken rope, a lucky charm, common clothes, and 10 gold pieces. Of course, for the traveling party, one of the most powerful things from the sailor background is the ship passage feature. You get free passage on ships as you are well connected in the naval community. Now it's time to roll some personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. So rolling on the table for the background, we have I never pass up on a friendly wager. Someday I will own my own ship. I will always remember my first ship and I follow orders even when they're wrong. I mean, that kind of sounds cool, and that was just from random rolling a D8 for the personality traits and D6s for the ideals, bonds, and flaws. And of course, the last thing to complete the bard is the bardic inspiration. You can use this, your charisma modifier, times per day. Um, so, that's once a day you can give a D6 to another character, allowing them to make a roll and then add six to it. You can roll before choosing to use the inspiration, so if you try to do something and you don't think you have the number to do it, you can use your inspiration at that time and you regain it when you finish a long rest. And that, everyone, will complete the Tortle Orly Bard uh, character sheet. So, just... Uh, you know, rewind the video if you need uh, to go back and see anything, but we have made uh, Orly, and it was pretty fun. It's good to see some new races in uh, Survivor's Guide, or, yeah, the Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount, and uh, I think maybe Kiri is up next. Uh, that would be a cool one to do. Uh, if you'd like to see more of this kind of content, let me know. It's fun to do. But until then, a like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you m m much later. Take care.